God damn, I need IPA. This is Beering Ain't Easy, your podcast for beer humor, dad humor, and beer tastings from Texas and beyond. So crack one if you got one and turn it up. Welcome to Beer and Ain't Easy with Adam and Drew, episode 35. Episode 35. And today we are going to bring back a very special guest, friend of the show, Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me back. I'm excited. If Ryan is here, then you know what that means. We have something special up our sleeves. We're coming back to a blind tasting. So last time Ryan was here, we did the blind tasting of the top flagship IPAs of the Houston area, which is one of our top five episodes all time on our downloads. So what that means is we got to come back and find out another top Houston beer via blind tasting. We're coming in hot today. What type of beer are we going to drink today, Ryan? We're going to check out some Houston Pilsners. It was harder than I thought it would be to find five different beers that you could easily pick up in a can in the summer, but I got them. And it is summer beer season. It is hot. Yeah, we're recording this on like the first heat wave of the summer. I mean, heat index today was 100 degrees, and so you can't be drinking those barrel-aged stouts. Oh, God. <laughs> you got to hit them crispy boys. <laughs> yeah. What do you guys want to do? You want to go ahead and start introducing beers? I think we need to introduce the concept. Okay. So we've got five Houston Pilsners and five unlabeled glasses, and we're going to rank them one to five and tell you which one of these is the best Pilsner in all of the Houston area. The first beer is Lager Beer from Evil Parts Brewing, formerly Sigma. So I had this beer by Sigma Brewing. And it was a pretty good beer. One of probably my top five Pilsners. I'm seeing if Equal Parts uh, is keeping up with what Sigma was bringing. I feel like making a brewery change is kind of a, that's that's a weird audible. So it is. Are they going to come back and become like the symbol? You know how Prince was like, became just a symbol. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> that's what Equal Parts is next. We're, we're going to find out, but I'm expecting big things out of this beer. Nice. How about you, Ryan? What you, what you got over there? Uh, over here, we got the St. Arnold H-Town Pills. And you are a card-carrying member of their society, right? <laughs> a yes, mug-carrying? Uh, <laughs> their Kickstarter-esque way to build their uh, beer garden. It's the uh, St. Arnold Society, they call it. They give you a mug, put your name on it, and give you free beer. Free beer is what's that. I'm not about that. Hold on, but is it really free? Yeah, free with quotation marks. Since <laughs> free with a hearty in, initial investment. Eventually, I'm going to get this investment back. Don't after, worry about that. after the first 150 visits, then it's truly free. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. It's just a challenge, right? It's just a challenge yeah, to get go. there. Yeah, let's look at it that way. Yeah, in a couple of years, like the, the cost per beer, you know, that initial investment, you know, with inflation like it is right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> It'd my be daughter, a steal. My daughter's going to be an adult in 17 years, and it's on after that. <laughs> <laughs> Next beer I've got, this is actually one of my favorite Pilsners of all time as well. And this is Little Snack. And this is from 11 Below Brewing. And uh, it's only a seasonal release. So hopefully they start making this thing year round because it's, it's a solid Pilsner. All right. Next beer by Texas Leaguer, Czech Swing. It's a Czech style Pilsner. They're out of Missouri City, Texas, right? Yes. We had to go a little bit outside of the Houston city limits to find enough Pilsners to taste side by side. And last beer I got out here is from Back Pew Brewing, the Blue Testament American Pilsner. And this one's a little interesting, so I'm wondering if this is going to... My prediction is this one's going to taste a lot different than the other ones because it's made with the traditional German flavor, but also sweetness of Texas corn. I feel like this is going to be a lot sweeter, Pilsner. So if you all remember, the name of the game is we got five beers. We all think in our head what we think is going to win going in, but we're going to come back and see the true test of which one is best by these three experts in the room here. <laughs> Experts. So I think the audience needs to know before we get going, what beers have each of us had in this lineup? 
That's fair. So, Ryan, what beers have you had? H-Town Pills, the one I introduced, is actually the only one I've had. I was actually going to make a statement that Pilsners are underrepresented in craft brewing, and then I realized I've only had one of these five, and I realized I'm part of the problem. Ooh. So, hopefully, I'll find a new love here, get rejuvenated, and hopefully everyone listening will go out and try to find some too. I'm not sure how you look yourself in the mirror. I know. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, Adam? All right, I have had three of these. I've had H Town Pills, I've had a little snack, and I've had lager beer. I've had a couple H Town Pills and a couple lager beers. I'll be honest, I don't remember much about Little Snack. Yeah, I think Little Snack's the one I've had the most, but just like you, I've had those three beers. I'm, I'm excited about trying the other two there. You know, like Ryan said, I think today is it's a it's Pilsner coming out day. <laughs> <laughs> we are having a pilsner party <laughs> so i think we could start drinking these beers and like just drop the formalities and, and let's just, get after it yeah all right so ryan we bring you on because you have a deeper understanding of beer than adam and i which is suburban level depth which you'll get to one day <laughs> <laughs> but tell us a little bit about the pilsner style yeah so uh Drew and I's wives are, are half Czech. Pilsner actually was developed in the Pilsner region in Czechoslovakia, uh, which then spread to Germany, which those immigrants were the ones that brought it to America. So a little association. When I just say like Pilsner beer, like what do you guys think about? Budweiser. Right. Yeah. See, same, same for me. Like you think of the domestics. So I feel like it got a bad rap because of that. Even though now Budweiser... Bud Light, all those, there's, there's American lager and American light lager categorized in the, in the beer judging categories. They separated those out completely because I think they got like a bad rap. Pilsner's got a bad rap from these like light lagers. So anyway, that beer comes over to the U.S. and this was in like the late 1800s. Um, but then you have World War One, you have Prohibition, you have the Depression, you have World War Two. When beer started coming back into vogue, it was like a race to the bottom with all these breweries to brew the cheapest, lightest thing you can possibly brew right so i feel like it's taken this long until where we're at now for craft beer to really kind of recover so that's that's my little cliff notes version of the, the pilsner history it was developed over there was super good got trashed here and now hopefully it's on its way back that's kind of like the american way though right <laughs> 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 we just cheapen someone else's culture and throw it in a glass and <laughs> <laughs> and prosper from it you know, since they've, you know, craft breweries have, have made Pilsners, like I'm, I'm a huge fan, especially with this time of year, you know, it's one of my favorite types of beer oh, in the yeah, summer. Absolutely. And the more breweries get into it, the more I'm like, man, I got to keep buying these just. It's hard though, because I'm so in love with IPAs. It's, I got to really be intentional about buying Pilsners. Yeah, as a result of this episode, I've got a fridge full of Pilsners, so we're going to be hanging out over here. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> so one thing I think we need to bring the audience in on is what are we seeing right now? The one thing that jumps out to me is there is one beer that is significantly lighter and more transparent than the others. Beer number three. It's interesting, like it, that beer number three. It may be the most transparent and clear, but it it's got it's got a, a lot more flavor than what it looks like. I think really. Mm -hmm. When you drink these beers, like they have some distinct different flavors. It's like so hard to like pinpoint what those. Flavors are. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, I agree. I agree, yeah. but I don't know how to articulate that. So I taste this, and I'm like, I think I can taste corn in there. I'm like. Coming to a conclusion and trying to back it up yeah. after the fact. I'm getting in a hint of corn. <laughs> <laughs> so, to either of you guys, like, where the hell did the term crispy boy come from? Because, like, I, I feel like I was late to the party on that. But, like, every, <laughs> everyone calls them crispy boys. So, like, does anyone know, like, where the hell that came from? No idea. Urban Dictionary. So, for the listeners, I am looking up where the origin of crispy boys came from right now. It's just... Wow. Apparently, um, the top definition on Urban Dictionary is white New Balance 600 series dad shoes. 
It <laughs> seems legit. <laughs> the exact shoe that Drew has on his feet right now. Uh, speaking of the dad life, let's like I'm I'm struggling on these pilsners. I, I feel like we yeah. need to we need to talk about something here, and and that topic is about in embracing your inner dadhood, which involves moving to the suburbs. And so Ryan recently has moved five minutes away from Eureka Heights Brewery in the city of Houston. Now is living out in uh, North Houston uh, in the burbs, like the rest of us. Congrats on making it to the burbs. Like you mentioned, I, I was walking distance to Eureka Heights and uh, in another brewery called New Magnolia. So that was always our fallback. It's like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, like, let's just walk down the brewery. We can get in the corner. Lily can run around a little bit. Now the closest brewery is 25 minutes away. Ooh. It's rough. <laughs> That's been quite the adjustment. How, how are you feeling about this transition in your life? Do you, like, wake up in the morning and you're like, thank God I'm in the burbs? <laughs> <laughs> have you accepted your new life is really the question. I have begrudgingly accepted it. And I think I may may have had some some pent up suburban dad inside of me that's finally coming free because I'm like loving the garage space and the backyard space. I'm like, I will not confirm nor deny that Allison caught me one time measuring the grass because I was curious how high I'm supposed to be mowing. <laughs> that's living that dad life. Oh man, that is living that dad. I don't know that's that, intense. I don't know that I was there on my first kid. Like I was just, I was going to say, if you were having struggles with it, I was going to say, you know, I did too. But like now, I don't know if it's a third kid thing, but like I've fully embraced dadhood at this point. I got the minivan we talked about a few episodes ago. I ended up pulling the trigger about that yeah. minivan. <laughs> that is when you've made it <laughs> as a dad. <laughs> it's like dad jokes. Bad clothing, mowing your yard, minivans. Like, I've just embraced it all. It's like, you know, fuck it. This is my life now. This is who I am. <laughs> this, is, this is who I was all along. I just didn't know it. <laughs> so, I'm welcome to the club, Ryan. I, I, I'm, you do have a pretty fantastic lawn in the back. Let's, let's keep it that way. <laughs> what are the things that Ryan needs to know to, to really be successful in the burbs? You're going to be a lot more reliant on going to Total Wine and doing the drive through at the brewery to get beer and bring it home and drink it. And you're going to be your new brewery seeing as your driveway. You find a newfound respect for HEB and their beer selection. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have been recent converts to HEB. Yeah. And also, also has been pretty happy with the HEB beer selection for sure. I do have a question. Does your neighborhood have a Facebook group? It does have a Facebook group. Are you a member yet? My wife is on it. I deleted my Facebook probably two years ago. That's your first mistake of moving to the suburbs because <laughs> yes. with without having the city to give you entertainment like <laughs> like live music and you know shows and other things that are fun to do, you have to get your entertainment from watching just complete utter like meltdowns on Facebook of neighbor versus neighbor. It's, it's a fucking rough world out there. <laughs> it's, it's true, though. Like, that is a primary source of entertainment. <laughs> so I'm on next door, but I haven't moved my address to the new suburban address. It's still the city address for next door. So I still get all the crazy updates about loose chickens and did somebody hear gunshots <laughs> just like three times a day. Like, I get all the crazy stuff in the city still, and I don't want to move into the suburbs because it's, like, all boring stuff. It's it's boring, but it's not. It's like, can we build a fence around our playground so nobody can get in from other neighborhoods? That's what that's what it resorts to. <laughs> Your perspective of what's boring changes. <laughs> we had a neighbor that went to the park. And had an altercation over the swings. <laughs> and one parent got in the other parent's face who proceeded to take their picture on Facebook and out them on Facebook. Is This person's a terrible person. And they argued with me about my kids on the swings. I'm not going to deal with it in person, but I'm going to just completely flame away on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Best part of my day. Weekend, year. <laughs> so I get a lot of entertainment by... Passively participating in these uh, Facebook chatters. And I have two memes that I use quite frequently. One of them Drew created, I think. Thank you. <laughs> Where it's the Doseki guy 
I don't, what does it say? Do you even remember? I don't always fight with my neighbor, but when I do, I do it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's one that I that I throw out there a lot. And then the other one is just a guy eating popcorn. So does your neighborhood have a pool? Yeah, it's got a pool. Good for you with those two pools. <laughs> Sounds like I'm a superior. <laughs> <laughs> superior to your one pool neighbor neighborhood. So have you drank beer at the pool with your neighbors? Poking a sore spot here. Our, uh, our neighborhood rules dictate that there is no food and alcohol in the pool area. Ooh, ouch. Mm-hmm. No food or alcohol in the pool yeah. area. Yeah. And you picked this neighborhood why? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm learning this after the fact, and it's very upsetting. <laughs> There's still time to uh, test the loopholes and the enforcement of these restrictions. The uh, neighborhood has a monthly food truck night. We roll up with a cooler last night, bust out beers, and we're sitting around for like the first 30 minutes, like looking around being like, are we the the only people out here drinking? (laughs) No one else was drinking. So there was a couple people walking around with like Yeti tumblers and stuff. So like, there's got to be something in there. We just weren't sure if that was like an adjustment we needed to make going out to the suburbs. Or uh, if people were just more discreet than we were. You've picked the wrong neighborhood if people are not kind of walking around with beers. They're, they're out there. They're out there. They're out there. You just got to find them. Yeah. There's always those neighbors where you're like, oh, yeah, you meet them once and you're like, yeah, we're not going to hang out yeah. again. But then then you find your click, the beer game. By click, do you mean drunks? I was trying to say it in a way that <laughs> didn't sound so bad. <laughs> but now that you mention it. enough of the dad talk we got to get to my favorite part of the podcast the great reveal our blind tasting results are in and we're here to tell you who takes home the h-town crown beer number one ryan what did you think of it where did it stack and do you have a prediction of which beer it is yes i was i was impressed by the clarity of this one it also had the most like kind of spiciness at the end of it for me. Um, this was my number three beer. I was I was guessing this was, was H Town Pills. I know St Arnold's specializes in like German style, so I, I feel like they would really nail those noble hops. So that was my guess, H Town Pills. Wow, also my guess was H Town Pills. H Town Pills. Yeah, I had H Town Pills as well. What was what was your rank out of the top five? Number four. Number four. Number four. This was actually my number two beer. Really? What I liked about it, to add on to Ryan, was that we sat here for a decent amount of time and the and the beers warmed up and you could start tasting impurities on some of the other beers. And so this one, I felt like it, it retained its flavor profile at the beginning when it was cold and then when it warmed up, I felt like it was it stayed stayed nice, clean, and crisp. So For the grand reveal. Drum roll, please. St. Arnold H-Town. Wow. So we went into this episode thinking that none of us would be able to get any of the beers. And so we actually went in saying we weren't going to pick the beers. But what did we do? We couldn't help ourselves. (laughs) That's that's the fun of this. So we have a record. Let's let's just say that... Let's just say my winning percentage just went up. Yeah. uh, Yours can't go down. (laughs) (laughs) So when I looked at it, Ryan is actually, from a percentage standpoint, is in the lead out of all of us on blind tastings. But it was from one tasting, not a lot of quantity. And so we'll see if it's a lot of pressure for Ryan today. Don't cheapen my victory. <laughs> <laughs> so now that now that we broke the ice, I think we have to ID every beer. Absolutely. So that, that brings us nope. to, to number... <laughs> We're done right here. <laughs> <laughs> beer number two. Ryan, what did you think... What did you rank? So, I got corn on the nose on this one, and after I smelled that, I feel like that's all I could taste. I put this one down as the blue from uh, Back Pew, and this was my number five beer. I, I mean, I drank my taster, but I don't really want more. <laughs> You're my boy, Blue. This was my favorite beer. Wow. Really? Uh-huh. Nice. And I thought it was sweeter than any of the other. And so... 
I think this one was lager beer. Okay, you thought this was the equal parts lager mm-hmm. beer. I actually was on track with Ryan here. I picked Blue Testament. I, I got that blue corn. I got that sweetness that you're talking about. Honestly, out of all five of these, I enjoyed every single one of them, and I would drink them again. But this actually was my number five pick. Did you say this was your number five? Yeah. Okay. Let's get to that grand reveal. Drum roll. Texas Leaguer Check Swing. Ooh. Wow. Well, we whiffed on that. We got really confident after that first one. <laughs> I need to know which one had corn in it right now. <laughs> That's interesting because when you when I, I saw was the, very confident about that pick. I honestly, like when I thought Check Swing, I was thinking it was going to be that really crisp Check Pilsners. And that one, I, I didn't feel like... It aligned with that classic check pills. What, what do you think, Ryan? Yeah, I don't know what to think anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is speechless. <laughs> okay. Beer number three. What do you got, Ryan? Color-wise, we all agreed this one was the lightest one. Um, I mean, it was super clean, crisp. It was really good. It was my number four beer. Um, there was nothing wrong with it. I didn't dislike it. It just was the least interesting to me. I guess this was a little snag. It was process of elimination. That's all it was. This is my second favorite beer. So one thing I'm realizing is Ryan and I have opposite Pilsner preferences. I did the process of elimination to come to this beer. So my confidence is not high. But uh, this one I thought was the back two. So I thought this one was also very creamy and smooth. And when it was cold... I actually had this one as my number one beer, but then as it warmed up, I got some more off flavors and it dropped down to my number three beer, but I still liked it. And I do think it's a little snack as well. That's That was my pick. With that, drum roll please. Equal parts lager beer. Wow. Yeah. Speechless. Wow. <laughs> wow. I I stand by one thing I said is it was one of my favorite. What's funny is when I had that one the first time, I remember it being super crisp and not a lot of flavors in it, but I got a lot of flavor in that one. But I do remember that one being super light colored. So that makes sense. All right. Beer number four. What do you got, Ryan? So I guess this one was lager beer. This one was actually my number one. This one was my favorite. It was just, it drank super clean. Every time I set it down and I was going to try a different one, I just found myself going back back to that one between every other sip. So, My prediction was this was Check Swing. And I had this as my number three beer. Ryan and I, like at least what we like, has been spot on. This was my number one. I, I thought it was the best flavor, best tasting, and I think we need to find out what it is. Drum roll. Little Snack. <laughs> wow. I do remember that Little Snack has always been one of my favorite Pilsners going into the season, so I feel validated that that is a really damn good Pilsner. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so beer number five. Uh, between one and five, these were the two that I noted that had the best clarity on them. Besides that, it was my number two. Uh, I guess this was Check Swing. So this was my number five beer. You and really I guess this, <laughs> I guess this to be back to you. No. <laughs> Check the tapes. <laughs> I guess it to be the little snack. I think we've learned that Pilsners are impossible to ID. <laughs> but as much as we thought otherwise after number one. <laughs> this was my number four beer. And I did not have any other interesting things to say about it. <laughs> I thought it had a real Czech flavor to it. (laughs) I think we got to recap this. So your number one beer that you said, what did it end up being, Ryan? Little Snack. Little Snack. My number one ended up being Little Snack. Adam, what was your number one? What was beer number two? Texas League or Czech Swing. Interesting. You know, two versus one. I think Little Snack takes the crown today. Yeah, where's that Little Snack? uh, I need some more of that. I have to point this out, and this is just... A little props for 11 Below Brewing, but this is the second blind tasting with five beers that we did 
that 11 Below Brewing has won. They won it with hipster sauce, and now they're winning it with little snacks. So I, I feel like we may have a little bit of an underrated brewery situation here. I think we might have yep, a right. situation brewing. <laughs> 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 Tough crowd. <laughs> Took me all week to think of that. So I think we're ready to start putting a wrap on this thing. First, I want to thank Ryan for coming back and uh, educating us on Pilsners and beer in general. Thank you for that, Ryan. Yeah, take uh, take your education with a grain of salt. Coming from the guy that just got one out of five right. We may be sub five hundred <laughs> as part of as a composite beer in ABC. <laughs> one day. It just shows how much of a challenge blind taste tests are. But they're so fun. They, or they are. And I honestly was so glad we did Pilsners. These were fantastic. So before we completely wrap up, I, I want to give a, a a little bit of a spot here to Cross the Streams Media. This is a group of podcasts that the Beer and Easy podcast just joined. It's got a whole lot of awesome podcasts to choose from. And you should go check out the website, crossthestreamsmedia.com. It's really got a pretty eclectic assortment of podcasts. Kind of like to think of it like a Vegas buffet. And what kind of food do we fit into? That's a really good question. (laughs) The the finest of steaks. I was going to say a lot of heartburn involved. (laughs) (laughs) Hopefully it's still fresh. (laughs) The finest of steaks. (laughs) It's part of a buffet where you... Guess what you think it is, and then it's wrong, and you have to eat it anyway. <laughs> I think that's a perfect summary of the Beer and Easy podcast. No better way to close this out. We'll see y'all next time. This has been a Beering Ain't Easy production in Houston, Texas. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram. And if you want to see what we're drinking, our untapped handles are Beering Ain't Easy Adam and Beering Ain't Easy Drew. has been a Cross the Streams media podcast.